The show Designing Women was a big hit, but apart from that, there was a star in the show whose popularity was even more humongous. We are talking about Delta Burke. She was one of the most promising television artists of her time. People loved the character of Suzanne Sugarbaker in Designing Women. Suzanne was this witty girl with a savage attitude which the fans of the show simply loved. That left a long-lasting impression on the viewers of that show. So much so that Burke became a household name during the 80s and 90s. But that didn't mean that the fans knew everything about her. There is more to Delta Burke's life than her character. From the personal struggles she went through to the professional hurdles she had to face, her story was far from happy and perfect, unlike her character in the show. And that is what we are going to talk about in today's video. The unknown story of Delta Burke and what really happened to her. Let's get started. Delta Burke was born on July 30th, 1956 in Orlando, Florida. She was raised by a single mother. Her mother, Jean, later married an Orlando-based realtor whose name was Frederick Burke. Frederick was a kind man and he adopted Delta. You might be surprised to know that Delta does not know who her real father is. That paints a very interesting yet sad picture of her personal life. Delta is the eldest of the three children Jean and Frederick have. She has a younger brother whose name is Jonathan and a small sister whose name is Jennifer. Delta was a promising student who showed great potential from the beginning. She took admission in Colonial High School, and when she graduated from there in 1974, her peers recognized her as, we quote, most likely to succeed. Well, that was obvious. She was bright, and on top of that, in the year 1972, she even won a beauty pageant organized by the Orlando Fire Department. She won the Miss Flame Crown. But that wasn't it for Delta. She wanted more. And so she went ahead and represented the entire state and won the title of State Miss Flame. Impressive, right? Well, wait till you hear more about her in the coming sections of this video. But the achievements we mentioned earlier aren't her favorites. Her favorite one and the most notable one was towards the end of her senior year of high school. Delta went on to win Miss Florida in 1974. That was the most notable achievement because she wrote history that day. Delta became the youngest woman in history to hold that title at just 18 years old. And winning Miss Florida meant that a lot of huge opportunities knocked on her door. She got a scholarship from the Miss America organization. And with the help of this scholarship, she was able to enroll herself in the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art. Getting into this academy was a step that transformed her entire journey. After she won the Miss Florida contest in 1974, she went on to appear in the show Bozo the Clown, which was a very popular ABC TV show back then. Bozo the Clown was filmed in her hometown, Orlando. 1974 was a big year for her because she was also featured in the World Football League Bowl. There, Louis Bice captured film footage of her as Miss Florida. The footage was later premiered in an episode of the show Lost Treasures of NFL Films, which came out in 2001. It took back fans to Delta's time as a young rising star, coming to her major breakthrough in the television world now. It was with the CBS Western miniseries, The Chisholms. Delta played the role of Bonnie Sue Chisholm. Then she moved on to show her skills in the comedy genre when she played Kathleen Beck in the series Filthy Rich. The character of Kathleen was that of a young widow who is very intelligent and ambitious. The show came out in 1982. After that, from the year 1984 to 1986, she played Diane Barrow, the owner of a football team in the show First and Ten. These roles she played are very important because they shaped her acting career and showed that she is a very versatile and talented actress who can take on any role she's given. The year was 1986 and Delta Burke just landed a role that would make her immortal in the world of television. The role of Suzanne Sugarbaker in the CBS sitcom Designing Women. She deserved this role because of two factors. First, she was an amazing actress. And second, she made a hard choice of leaving the show she was doing at that time. The show, first and ten. Linda Bloodworth Thomason was the maker of the show Designing Women, and she had already worked with Delta in the past in the series Filthy Rich. Filthy Rich was a sitcom that revolved around four four women who run an interior design firm in Atlanta. 
Burke was one of the leads. Along with Delta, there was Dixie Carter. Dixie also landed a lead role in Designing Women. We know now that Designing Women was a successful show that fans loved. But that isn't how things were when the show rolled out first. It had a tough start, and the first season was a disaster because the ratings were so bad that it got temporarily cancelled. It was not until 1989 that the fate of the show changed when it paired with another show, Murphy Brown, and started getting popular. Burke gained a lot of praise and became a breakout star. The character of Suzanne Sugarbaker became a fan favorite and earned her two consecutive nominations for the Primetime Emmy Award for Lead Actress in a Comedy Show. No other female lead in that show went this far. Burke was the only one to share this honor. This did not mean other actresses in the show did bad. One of the actresses, Alice Ghostly, who appeared in the show frequently as Bernice Clifton, went on to receive a nomination for Supporting Actress in 1992. While Burke was a hit in this show, her sudden quitting the show raised a lot of eyebrows. After more than a decade at 67 years old, Delta Burke opened up about her sudden departure from the show, Designing Women, where she played Suzanne Sugarbaker for five seasons. When she left in 1991, there was a widespread report that it was because of some disagreement she had with the maker of the show, Linda Bloodworth Thomason. Burke recalls that Linda and her husband Harry Thompson put her through a series of psychological mistreatments. The situation became very ugly. But before she finally left, there were times when Burke had the thought of leaving the show in the past as well. Let's talk about that. When Burke first joined the show, she was filled with joy. She loved everything about the show, from her role to her co-stars. But as time went by, things started to change behind the scenes. Burke hasn't told the particulars about it, but she gave a hint. And this, along with the stress and pressure that came with her, was too hard to handle. Burke recalls she wanted to leave there, but was not allowed to. Shedding more light on Delta's relationship with Linda, the creator of Beautiful Women, Burke recalls that it was full of admiration, respect, and frustration. As you know, they already worked together. Despite that, Burke and Linda had a love or hate relationship. Another huge reason behind her leaving was the hate and comments she got for her weight. Burke was fragile in this aspect, and she accepts that she did not know how to cope with the hurtful comments she was getting because she had put on some weight. The comments were horrible, saying that Burke was pregnant and at one instance, a fan literally grabbed her coat and passed a horrible statement. Let's see how fat you are. That's what he said. It is enough to shatter anyone. And Burke was constantly facing that from her fans who often criticized her for gaining fat. She knew how to deal with criticism, but until this point, it was too much to handle. Burke recalls that her demeanor completely changed as the pressure rose on the set. When she reflects on her time in Hollywood, she says that in the beginning, she dreamed about becoming famous and gaining all the recognition she could. But after all the negativity, that changed. She says that she wanted to go back in time and take it all back before the negativity started. It was so deep that Burke got admitted to a hospital due to a breakdown. This was after she won the Emmy nominations. The thrill of getting nominations overpowered the pressure she was taking. In a segment of Entertainment Tonight in 1990, Delta opened up about her departure from the show. She explained that the working conditions and environment on the set were horrendous. The shift was gruesome and extended to almost 15 hours a day, and things were so out of control that the makers literally had to block the doors so that no actor can leave the set. On top of that, Burke's close friend Dixie Carter and her got into a big fight. Dixie was a part of the show, by the way. She was also the bridesmaid when Burke married Gerald McRaney. The reason behind their split was that Dixie was taking sides with the makers during this conflict. By the time the fifth season of Designing Women was wrapped, Burke's bad relationship with Dixie and showmakers resulted in them firing her in 1991. Do you remember that weight loss fight Burke was fighting? Well, it really took a toll on her, and she went down a dark path. You'll be surprised to know what happened. Have you ever had that moment of insecurity and wished you could do something about it? We all had that right. But sometimes that can take a weird turn. That's what happened with Delta Burke. After getting all the troll from media and fans, she decided to do something about it. Did you know that she suffered from trolls and backlash before designing women? 
It was when she was shooting Filthy Rich. Burke was attending an acting school in London, and a doctor prescribed her weight loss pill at that time. The pills came with side effects which had an impact on her heart rate, but Burke neglected those because she wanted to fit in in Hollywood. When she came back to the US and started searching for those same pills, she found out that they were illegal. But Burke was desperate, and she wanted to lose weight anyhow, and so she turned to her friend from Filthy Rich, who introduced her to something called Black Beauties. This was also illegal. Regardless, Burke started taking these in the morning every day as a part of her daily routine. But just like any drug out there, these stopped showing results because her body became tolerant to them. And so her friend from Filthy Rich recommended something stronger. That something was crystal meth. But crystal meth wasn't popular at that time. And so Burke had zero idea what she was getting into. Her co-worker taught her how to use it. It was chop it up and snort it method. Burke said she was not going to snort anything. So she started taking it with cranberry juice. Burke used to dissolve it in juice, mix it, and then take it. On top of that, she spent days without eating anything, starving herself just to lose some weight. But guess what happened even after all this work? Nothing changed. She was still getting all the trolls and hate. Some said she was fat. Some said her legs are big or her butt was too big. But now, while Burke looks back at all these, she says that she was too insecure. And she shouldn't have been. Because, she says, she looked like a goddess back then. The year was 1992 and Burke was offered a show of her own. It was called Delta and Burke played the role of an aspiring singer who's trying to make her name in country music. Burke was a great actress and she always tried to add perfection to every role she played. This was no different. She dyed her hair blonde for this one. This shows her dedication to her work. But unfortunately, the show got canceled after just one season. Do you remember how Burke got in a fight with the maker of the show Designing Women? Well, she patched things up with her in 1995 and returned to play her legendary character of Suzanne Sugarbaker once again. But this time around, it was for a spin-off of Designing Women, called Women of the House. Sadly, this series also came to an end very early. Remember Dixie? Her friend turned foe. Well, it took them both more than a year to solve the feud between them. But eventually, they were seen together again in the show Family Law, where Burke made a guest appearance. For the record, Dixie was a regular cast member in Family Law. As the years passed by, Burke continued to show promise by taking on lead roles in many television movies. One of the best-known films of Burke came out in the year 2000 named What Women Want. Mel Gibson was her co-star in this movie. And it was this time Burke went through a challenging phase of her life as she was diagnosed with diabetes. In the year 2000, she also starred in a sitcom, Dag, with David Allen Greer. She had to work hard to lose weight again. But this time it was tougher since she had diabetes. Burke was not limited to TV shows and movies. She also made her debut on Broadway in 2003. She starred in the musical Thoroughly Modern Millie, where she played the role of Mrs. Mears. Burke wasn't the first choice for this role. Earlier, Harriet Harris and Terry Burrell were playing this role. Burke played this role till February 2024, after which her friend Dixie Carter took over the role. After this, Burke went on to play Truvy in another Broadway production of Steel Magnolias. She had a four-month-long run from April to July 2005. Sure, she was doing Broadway, but that doesn't mean that Burke was no longer interested in TV. She was again seen on television in Boston Legal, where she played Bella Horowitz. In 2008, Burke was seen in the movie Bridal Fever, which came out in February 2008. Later, in March 2012, Burke was offered a role in Counterculture. While she was shooting, she fell badly and injured herself and the production was halted. Unfortunately, it never revived. So that was the career highlights of the highly talented Delta Burke. Let's talk about her personal life now. And we will also tell you what she is doing right now. Delta married the love of her life, Gerald McRaney on May 28, 1989. He is an amazing man. Remember when she was facing a fight with weight loss and drug use? McRaney has been stepping by her side since then. He was there in her darkest times. And whenever things seemed out of control, he stayed by her side and made things bearable. Burke feels forever grateful for him. She opened up about it and said that Gerald accepted her for who she was. 
She recalls that even her own family members, even her mother and grandmother focused on her appearance and judged her. But never did Gerald. He never cared about the way she looked. And that, Burke says, means the world to her. Although Burke and Gerald have no children together, Gerald has children from his earlier marriage. Right now, McRaney and Burke are living in Los Angeles, California, but they also own houses in different parts of the country, like Colorado, Louisiana, Telluride, and New Orleans. Burke's diabetes problem took a big step. Now she is facing type 2 diabetes, and she is very open about it. Apart from being a great actress, Burke is also a huge advocate for gay rights. This is clearly visible as she has, over the years, collaborated many times with Del Shores in productions like Sordid Lives and Southern Baptist Sissies. Del is a gay playwright and screenwriter. She was also about to feature on the Nashville talk show, Talk of the Town. Gay actor Leslie Jordan was planning to join her on the show. However, the show's management team thought that the topics they were going to cover might upset their conservative viewers, and so Burke and Leslie were uninvited. If you're curious when her support for the LGBTQ plus community started, well, it was around the time she was in acting school in London. Her sister Jennifer fueled her feelings to support the community. Jennifer is a lesbian. Apart from advocating for the gay community and being in the acting field, Burke also tried her luck in fashion and design. She has her own company, which she calls Delta Burke Design, and it's based in New York. Burke and her husband also own an antique store in Collins, Mississippi. So it's safe to say that Burke is also an entrepreneur. If we get deep into her personal life, she is also open about her struggle with compulsive hoarding. Compulsive hoarding is unnatural love for your belongings. It's too much attachment to personal things. Burke tries to take matters into her own hands and so she goes to therapy. She recalls that once she had 27 storage units full of her personal belongings. So there you have it. That is what really happened to Delta Burke. Her story is an example of persistence and resilience, and it is enough to inspire anyone to stand back from every fall they take in life. By the way, what was your favorite Delta Burke moment? Let us know down in the comments section. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.